I have a unique uh, session to moderate and uh, I'm really thrilled with it. And I have an equally more competent, uh, you know, expertise uh, with me. And uh, let me brief through what uh, they're going to cover up. Uh, so what we had right now is a primary prevention. What I mean by primary prevention, you do a certain things, you prevent a disability from arising. So that's the primary prevention, which uh, Pradeep and uh, Sarvanan sir have uh, very elegantly covered. Now we are going to something much beyond it. So we are going to something was uh, pr primordial prevention, where Dr. Sadil, who is an ergonomic and robotic rehabilitation specialist, uh, I think, I mean, I was so enlightened to have so many specialists are there and he has gone beyond, uh, you know, um, designing uh, the way we have to sit and think. Um, you know, we hadn't heard of it at all. So, uh, really happy and uh, privileged to have you here, sir. So, he is the director of uh, cardiopulmonary uh, rehabilitation at Sakara World Hospital. So, sir will be speaking about uh, strengthening uh, the back muscles and um, muscles of the back and neck. So, over to you, Saril, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're, yes, sir. Oh, you're audible. Except that your uh, PowerPoint is not showing. Maybe you have to open the PowerPoint and then uh, share. Ah, now now we we'll see. Now we we'll see. Yeah. 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 Fine. Thank you. So welcome all. Uh, it's a great platform. I'm I'm so happy and thrilled to be here. We've been working with uh, so many different types of uh, professionals and. Uh, including uh, working and taking care of physiotherapists and my other colleagues as well. And today, this is a very unique opportunity. And I, I think there's so much that we can do. And I am feeling so much um, empowered uh, because of the knowledge. And more than that, the opportunities that lies ahead. Um, I think it's, it's my responsibility. Somewhere I feel that we never thought of. We have uh, worked a lot with the dentists and uh, uh, a lot of other surgeons as well. But I think it's so obvious somewhere I feel uh, regretful that we never kind of looked into this particular segment where it is all, it, it all becomes so meaningful. Now, as Dr. Rajesh said, uh, let's quickly get into what we can do to, because these stress and strain is going to be there. This is our profession. All that we can do is to, to, to make, to brace ourselves and strengthen ourselves. And when, we, when I'm going to talk about neck and back exercises, um, I'll be slightly modifying the topic to just exercise as medicine. We call all these problems which arise out of work as work-related musculoskeletal disorders, WRMSDs, or there are many other names for it actually. RSI, repeated stress injury, so a few of the points that we need to understand over here is it is not habitual, the habits rather of repetition, putting more stress, getting more tense when I'm doing something, uh, a lot to do with the person itself. But these are an overview of what OEM doesn't teach us, what and how all these adjustments need to be done. So adjusting, arranging your workplace so that we are not adjusting our own or we are not compromising our own body comfort and the postures. Psychological stress is a huge element and that puts, as man was telling, that the muscles automatically start taking up to a higher tensed tone and that continues throughout and the person starts developing it as a habit. Exercise frequency, this is nothing but our physical activity or a habit of doing the exercise very often or just movement. The spinal mobility is an extremely important aspect because a, a surgeon who start sitting for three hours, four hours, six hours on, on a routine basis, what happens is the spinal phase at joints start getting locked. There are smaller ligaments and apart from the, the muscles, which actually shorten over a period of time. All this eventually gets into a locked up position and that's what is called a spinal mobility. Nowadays, we do have chiropractors in Bangalore who are more specialized in unlocking these joint problems to get you a more uh, 
you know, beautiful movement and prolonged sustained posture. This need to be overstressed throughout this uh, presentation because it's every word is important. Prolonged is the time sustained. You just stay onto the same posture for too long and you don't change the posture. Now, because of all these risk factors, what we are seeing here is these major muscles, ligaments, the bone and the joint, they all get to take a lot of stress. The mobility reduces. And eventually what you can see over here is something what we call as fascia. Now, this is the most important aspect nowadays the entire science is focusing on, something we call as the myofascial junctions. The entire body beneath our skin has this facial covering. And if fascia gets tight, that's why sometimes we, we wake up with a, a tight area around the neck and it's so painful. We start calling those nodules kind of a thing called a trigger point or a myofascial pain syndrome and things. So all these red dots are the most prominent ones that could get. So they could be active trigger points and they could be latent trigger points which develops in each of us. And the more experience that you get and our age progresses, our defensive mechanisms start weakening because we become less physically active. And therefore, the entire focus, um, I would like to shift on to movement as medicine. So we are going to cover up majorly the postural awareness exercises. There are a lot of techniques that we can train a person to become very mindful about the body alignments, like how, uh, as the first presenter said, how much the head is tilted forward. So even if you are closing your eyes, how do you get to feel where is your body positions aligned in relation with each other? So this is a sequential exercise that we teach, something we call as Alexander technique. And there are many other techniques which are more popular. But eventually what we do is, it's like um, uh, using Legos that you build a person's body. So where is your hip? How is your knee? How much is it bent how, in relation to the right to the left? So the entire body, we, we allow a person to scan yourself so, and do this so often that you start developing an, a, a sense of your posture and wherever you feel stress, you start relieving the stress. Relaxation exercise is extremely important and I'll be happy that uh, you know, my, uh, the, the next presenter on yoga therapy would be touching a little bit on more of the breathing exercises that could be done. So there are something called progressive relaxation exercises exercises where you can just clench your fist, for example, for a few seconds and then relax. But what we do is we progress this upwards. Then it becomes the forearm, then it becomes your elbow, then it becomes your shoulder muscles. So you do it one after the other or both the sides together. It's up to us. But eventually we learn to relax. You know, we have had so many, um, I mean, my own colleagues from the hospital who come after a few days of stressful surgeries. And even if we make them lie down, they just cannot relax or some parts of the body still continue to be in the tensed position. Therefore, breathing exercises, it could be as simple as a mindful deep breathing. We could do a, take a deep breath through the nose in and breathe out through the mouth. If we want, we could count it. Say for usually what we prescribe is like inhale for a count of four, hold the breath for a count of four, and exhale for a prolonged count of six, and then hold the exhaled position for a count of two. When I say count, it can be at the pace that the person is comfortable with. So that's about the relaxation exercises. And what I will be taking you through a lot of videos today is. Uh, the stretching exercises and uh, which we can do in between uh, the work and that's the most important part we don't do exercise only in the gym we do it in our workstation in between our work and strengthening exercises so this is the ultimate warrior which would literally uh, you know safeguard us against all the future stress and strain that's going to come up and last but not the least the most important thing is do anything which is physically active. So just do not get into more and more of a, um, you know, 
uh, just uh, some kind of posture, some kind of positions and feeling so comfortable that you're always in your seated position. So try to be as active as possible and get into a more physically active lifestyle. So that's uh, how we call it as movement becomes our medicine. The only catch over here is all of us are different. So we call this as anthropometry, which is nothing but maybe even for the same person, my right side and left side is sometimes uh, asymmetrical. So the length of my hand, the length of my legs, my length of my limbs, everything. So we are all so different and therefore, so that's the anatomical variation. And so becomes more uh, relevant over here is the biomechanics of our own body varies so much. It's the way that some part of our myofascial uh, part is more tight. Maybe some muscles are more tensed. Maybe certain joints are locked and they don't allow to be the full movement. All that we call as the biomechanics. So we need to really have an uh, understanding about how well your body is active at this moment based on which you adjust all these exercises. So it's not necessary that every exercise that we are going to show is going to work out for somebody. What I mean to say is, if you don't have a tightness in a particular muscle, you will find that exercise very easy. So you need not focus more on that. So we are all different. So one size doesn't fit all. So is the exercise over here. Let's look a little deep dive into the stretching exercise. And that's the majority of the, pro of the program about. The stretching exercises are such amazing one where it improves the range of motion of every single joint. So the illustration that is right below, if you if you all of us just try you know, to touch our hands behind, and then you will be so surprised if you turn these sides to the other way, there will be variation. So that is a very simple indication of the asymmetry in our body in terms of movement. Stretching exercises helps us to relieve tension in tight muscles. It improves the circulation to that local area as well as the entire joint. It prevents stiffness from prolonged sustained positions. But these are the key points. Slow, extremely slow, sustain a stretch, be as relaxed as possible, do not use any accessory muscles, be completely mindful about what you're doing, have a relaxed breathing and repeat it at least three or four or five times. And usually we say up to 20 to 30 seconds of a hold of a particular stretch is always good so that we're giving enough time for the sarcomeres and everything to really relax. And the body start understanding that I need to lengthen this muscle over a period of time. I would be uh, happy if anybody would want to perform it along with the videos. The first and the most important thing that we are going to do over here is called a chin tuck. Very simple uh, exercise where what we do is we are going to just take our chin backwards. If needed, you can use the hand like the model that is doing actually to just hold the position. What we're doing is the ear is becoming aligned in your shoulder level. And these, uh, especially the C1, C2, the joints over there, it's very difficult to mobilize those joints. And those are the problem areas if you're continuously bending down and focusing on something, especially when the weight is small forward. So this is one exercise to reverse the impact, the negative impact of all that we have been seeing so far. Very important and very useful. So we call it as just the chin tuck. So just forward, you can still be able to take it forward and you can take it backward. Without rest of the body part is totally relaxed. And similarly, the second important thing is a tummy tuck. It may not be so visible in the, in, the, in the video, but what you can do is just go stand against a wall, align your head, touch the wall backwards, your shoulders relaxed and around around to the backwards, and your tummy, you just pull it inside, but you continue normal breathing. Do not hold your breath over there. Continue doing normal breathing, but what we are doing is over here, your tummy tucks. Now, once we learn it in this particular pattern, we could do this in any position, even while driving, even while talking to somebody, even while doing your surgery, you just can learn to tighten the tummy muscles 
and you still be breathing. It takes a little bit of practice and maybe in the beginning you might need somebody to really observe at you or if you are more mindful, you could hold your hand on the stomach muscles to feel the stomach muscles getting really tight and hold the posture. Now you can see that what we are doing is we are aligning the head to the shoulder, to the hip, to the foot. So everything, all the joints become in a particular uh, a line, straight line downwards. And there, if you're feeling too tightness or too difficult to do some, those are the points that we need to focus further. Neck forward bends, very simple thing, though we are always sitting on that, what happens is every joint, every movement need to be taken to the extreme. So we usually do not have any movement where I have to completely let my chin touch my chest, if possible and forward neck bends and the reverse of that. And this is a brilliant one. If you just start doing it very comfortably, take the head backwards as far backwards as possible. But mind it, I'm not bending completely backwards. It's only my neck which goes completely backwards and hold over there. If you will, you, would, you could close the eyes and do it and feel the entire movement and feel the stretch which is happening in front part of the body. Moving forward, neck side bends. And very uh, useful exercise that you will find. And in this particular uh, video, as you can see, the person is holding on to the chair so that there is no accessory. So one end of the uh, muscle is stabilized. And the other part, you slowly stretch as far you could and then use the hand to stretch still further. And the trunk remains straight but the neck is bent to one side. And please remember, once you do this, do it very slowly, come back to the neutral position, repeat two, three times. If you want, you could repeat more than that. The more, the better. And then please remember to balance it by doing it onto the opposite side as well. So the next side bends. Shoulder shrugs. Simply lift your shoulders to your ears as far as possible. If you want, you could just hold it as high as possible and then totally let it go. Relax as far as possible. You may retract also this kind of, uh, you know, take it completely up and fully down and shoulder rotations. So beautifully just try to rotate, like make circles in the air and forward and then you reverse the entire direction backwards. And with this regard, what I want to tell is the scapula or the shoulder blades, that's what we need to work more. Pectoral stretches. And uh, I was very surprised to see the beautiful video uh, in the very beginning. And thanks to the, the brilliant work that is done by your entire team, Dr. Mahesh, that uh, the wall stretches that you do. So this is a unilateral one. This is for your front pectoral muscles that you just hold onto any uh, surface and then you try to reverse onto the opposite side. You all could try it once wherever you are seated. So very simple stretches and then try to do it on the other side. Even if you're not holding anything, it's still fine. You want to hold behind something, a table nearby, and you just stabilize the end or portion and then you turn as far backwards as possible. So the entire front shoulder portion starts getting relaxed. And if you want to do it for both the pectorals, that's when you do something onto the corner of the wall, the way the, uh, the model was doing it typically inside the lift. So you, or you can just simply just extend your arms and stretch as far backwards as possible and then you move forward. But the advantage of doing holding onto one side is one end of the muscle is kind of stabilized and then you can very slowly, slowly, you will know that you're progressing day by day. Shoulder stretches, uh, you know, further to that is that the scapular muscles, what we do is we, we make a fist and we bend down a little bit. And here, what is not really visible over here is that you need to move your shoulder still further so that your, your scapular muscles start stretching bilaterally. That's the very important thing. What we call as periscapular muscle strengthening, stretching is the key. And this you are doing it for the horizontal abduction. And this may or may not be a problem. Many people do that very often. But the point here is 
some of this might look very simple but knowledge translating into practice remembering to do it in between your work there is no particular order you can pick up any of these exercises but get the habit of breaking your work in between and do this things you may do it as a preparatory in the start of the day you may do it as a cool down also you may do it in between or when you do it when you get back to your opd anywhere just get the habit that you know you are aware that all these muscles are getting stressed throughout the day so you need to unwind it in between before it starts piling up then you go back home so don't wait till evening start doing it during the day this might be a little more difficult but very effective excellent um, i mean this is something that those uh, particular purposely i put this one because i'm sure when you start showing this to youngsters they will find a lot of this exercise oh this is very easy this is very easy so try giving a little more uh, you know uh, difficult ones where the entire body is participating and your entire front chest area your shoulder your shoulder capsule all of them get to stretch and you are doing a good amount of of exercise to the entire body so it's a whole body stretch it's a very simple triceps muscle so you could do it uh, lift up and push it backwards beyond and remember to do it on the other side as well similarly if you want to do it uh, in a different little different way so why i'm showing this differences is as i go back to that slide that one size doesn't fit all some of these things you might find it very easy but we went just vary a little bit we know that okay because these muscles have got different fibers and it's not necessary the entire muscle is always tight maybe certain muscle fibers are more tight than the other fibers of the same muscle may be a little uh, loose so try doing these different variations so it becomes easy for you to understand which one is problematic for you and focus on that very important aspect is how you do exercise for your hands and this is just for the distal ip interphalangeal joints the first exercise the second one is for the as you, as you can see the proximal ips where the mcp is remaining the metacarpophalangeal joint is remaining straight and then you are only focusing on to that so this is for the mcp very simple exercise where you are just lifting it so these are simple ones but how it becomes useful is when you do it and how often you do it this is for the entire hand to clench and then just spread as far as possible because a lot of lumbrical muscles inside the small muscles they get tired very quickly so uh, please remember to do this stretches in between this is for the radial and ulnar deviations actually so you can just keep it next to that and these are the ideal positions that i'm showing but please do not think at any point that there is a particular way that you have to do it any moment is good trust me that's what my entire experience is taught me and this is for the pronation and supination so you can just get your whole hands together and then just turn it uh, please know that in this uh, movement are uh, a little faster but if you feel tightness please stretch and hold it for longer please do not do it so quick because if the muscles are tight and if you do it very quick it will get more tight so we have to be very careful we are trying to relax and relieve the muscle tension so therefore the movements need to be prolonged and very gradual now let's let's think about the trunk so forward spinal stretch where your legs are a little wide apart and then the point here is now please do not get confused that you know when we have been telling do not sit forward the whole time and now we are trying to stretch it because we do not get to this extreme of the movement therefore it's very important that we take the body to the extreme range possible for each of us and the reverse of that brilliant one you have been sitting and doing the you know surgery for a very long time all you have to do is this one simple exercise will do its magic so you just have to stand stretch as far as possible and when i'm saying as far as possible is a very important thing we should know where is our limit we should not be overdoing it that's when we get a lot of patients coming to us that i did the exercise and landed up in this pain lateral trunk stretch which is nothing but to the sides to both the sides that you can so you may do this in sitting as well where to the sides of the chair that you go or still better because you are continuously sitting 
you can stand up and stretch. The change the posture itself is an exercise. Wall slides, there's a little advanced uh, exercise, but if you have started feeling the pain, please get into the a little more difficult kind of exercise. So the, there are different grades of exercise that we need to know which one fits for each of us. Sir, we need sir, to, oh, sorry, I'm uh, interrupting. Um, we need to you know, quicken a little bit, sir, because we're running a little bit short of no, time, sir. Sure. Sorry, sorry for that, sir. No problem. This is knee to chest stretch and uh, quadricep stretch where the leg is taken backwards and a calf stretch, which can be done right on top of your chair. So what I've tried to carefully pick for us, this particular uh, you know, uh, professional group, is that all this is possible right in your workstation. And nothing, uh, something that we overlook is like us ophthalmologists, the most favorite part of mine is exercise, because I'm, I'm sure I don't have to tell you all that there are smaller, finer muscles for the eyes, and they need to be exercised. And I would leave up to this group to figure out, I'm sure you are the ones who prescribe eye exercise to all the people. So there are around six, seven different exercises that we can do for we are refocusing and we sometimes blink or you can do palming where you just totally, uh, you know, close your eyes and open your eyes into the darkness and then take it out because it's always there's a lot of light coming into the eyes. So eye exercises are equally important. Moving on to the strengthening exercises, uh, this is to improve the posture, circulation, and endurance. Endurance means the ability to hold it for longer time. We could use isometric neck rotations, scapular stabilization exercises, postural retraining, deep neck flexors, activation and training, resistance band. Nowadays, you get it, uh, you know, the colorful resistance bands or dumbbells. They are enough for us to do various exercises where we can progress it over a period of time add more resistance to the exercise and do it. So in nutshell, it's at least 20 minutes strength training program, three times a week for 10 weeks is scientifically proven to reduce neck pain and brace yourself to take care of yourself and face the daily stress and strain on the body. And eventually the last but not the point is a healthy lifestyle walking, cycling, dancing, swimming, any recreational sports. Doesn't matter even if it's only on a Saturday or only on a Sunday, it's okay. But anything is better than being sedentary in your lifestyle. So physical activity conditioning is to have a basic level of body conditioning and you know ongoing. And if you get a pain, is where we could really help you. There are manual therapy techniques, as you can see over here, where we use commonly what we call as trigger point therapy. And nowadays, we can teach a person to do it themselves. Dry needling, foam rolling. There are laser therapy, uh, RPWs, kinesio taping, as you can see over here, or a dynamic taping. And this is an important aspect that I would like to highlight on because this is something that we have developed with the, a lot of research ongoing that we can do a complete ergonomic wellness screening. I'm sure all of us are aware about health checkup, but now we have developed a specific ergonomic wellness screening for everybody, which covers, we will have measurements for each person's flexibility, posture score, spinal mobility, core muscle strength, endurance and balance score, respiratory muscle strength, functional capacity evaluation, which tells that how much each surgeon can perform and functional movement screening. What are the limitations in the body and what need to be focused on? So this is a very advanced thing and I'll be extremely happy. I've already shared this uh, idea I was planning to do with uh, Dr. Mahesh as well, that we could all join hands and we'll be very happy to do it with as, as probably a, you know, a study or something like that for anyone who is interested in this group. And we could really profile you up. Like we all know our sugar level, we all know our cholesterol level, similar way. Now we can get all these elements measured to the numbers and then we can give you a customized training protocol. This is not available anywhere in India, but we have developed it and all the tools are available. And we could do this in, in your hospital. We could, the whole team can come over there. We just have to plan it out how to do it. And we call it as ergonomic wellness screening. To sum it all up, we are evolving, but 
Are we really evolving to the level that we should meet our daily stress and strain? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, a wonderful uh, exercises and uh, presentation. Only thing is, like, we need to you know, keep these things at our mind. Uh, I will uh, co coordinate with you for some kind of a ready reckoner, which we might have.